Hello, I'm Dr. Hannah Critchlow. I'm a neuroscientist, an author, a broadcaster, and a fellow at Magdalen College, University of Cambridge. So my background, my expertise lies in neuroscience, and I've given talks to live audiences of thousands of people. And I've also created bespoke, tailored, individual workshops for smaller groups of people. The areas, the topics that I cover include the neurobiology underpinning decision-making, morality and ethics, also communication and consensus building. I also look at creativity, how to boost intuition or introspective skills, and how to also instill a greater well-being within teams and ensuring that you've got the right recruitment strategy to ensure that you create the best team of people from which you can harness the great diversity of cognitive skills that are on offer. Is there a recipe for success in terms of recruiting the right team? Well, when we look at the literature, there's a fantastic study that's analysed over 20 million scientific papers, and it's also looked at over two million different inter um, intellectual patterns that have arisen from that scientific research. And what they found is that the recipe for success is ensuring that you have team members from eclectic, disparate different groups. So you've got different people that have expertise in a wide range of topics that are coming together in an innovative way to solve a problem with different perspectives and different approaches and they're working together as a team. When we also look at the ways that you can recruit a team, there's some lovely work looking at, for example, how the brain changes during the typical lifespan. So, for example, the adolescent brain, which runs all the way from maybe 11 years old to mid-20s, that distinct phase of neurodevelopment is associated with a much higher level of creativity and lateral problem solving. The older brain profile, so the brains of uh, myself or people that are even older, their brains will weigh up different information from the outside world in a different way. And they'll actually place a higher ratio of their processing based on what's stored within their head rather than the signals from the outside world. So they have more of a knowledge base with which to draw on and they have finessed expertise. So bringing those different types of brain profiles together can help boost the cognitive power that's on offer in your team. Well, exactly. So once you've recruited your ACE team, you need to be able to access that cognitive diversity that's on offer within them. And one way that you can do that is through enhancing communication skills. There's something that happens generally within a team. So when you look at a group of four people, then about 60% of the time, half of those people, two of them will do most of the talking. When you increase the size of the group, to, for example, six people, then half of that group will do 70% of the talking. And the problem gets increasingly worse as certain um, individuals within the group dominate and create a cognitive bias within that group to the detriment of any ideas that might have been offered by the more introverted, quieter members of the group. So what can we do to try and circumnavigate that problem of dominance dynamics? Well, there's been some lovely work looking at ideas, for example, such as brain writing. So a little bit like brainstorming ideas for innovative problem solving, but brain writing actually involves anonymously writing down ideas and then handing them in. And this actually generates about twice the volume of ideas and the ideas are thought to be in more innovative um, and better value as well. There's other ideas, for example, you can flip hierarchies within the group. So, for example, the juniors actually lead the problem solving, and that's been shown to have some increases in terms of um, problem solving skills that are generated. There's one very robust replicable finding that shows that you can increase uh, success for team working by a very simple, simple measure, and that's changing the ratio of the gender makeup of the team. So the more females you have within a group, the more likely they are to be able to work together and solve the problem effectively. And this isn't really something to do with uh, some incredible attributes of the female brain. It's thought that maybe more is due to the fact that they, the females are more likely, possibly due to cultural uh, indoctrinations, but they're more likely to communicate and take turns in suggesting ideas amongst each other.
a little bit of stress is actually very good for the brain. It releases adrenaline, which increases a spike of electrical activity across the brain and makes it more active. But chronic long-term stress has a drip, drip negative effect on the brain. It actually starts to decrease the connections across the brain and starts, it can in really extreme circumstances, start to kill off nerve cells. Okay, so what can we do to try and protect our brain against the negative effects of stress? Well, there's something else we need to know about stress, actually. So if you're chronically stressed, what can happen is that the activity in different circuits within the brain changes. So there's an area of the brain called the amygdala, which is in the middle of the brain, that's the fear center of the brain. And when you're under stress, that becomes hypersensitive and hyperactive. And that occurs at the expense of the anterior cingular cortex, which is around this region of the brain. And that region is involved in more collaborative problem solving and horizon scanning. So what you want to do is change the balance under stress so that you have this area of the brain being much more active than the frozen amygdala that's cancelling out any innovative problem solving. And one way that we can do that is by meditating. So taking deep breaths and starting to imagine, closing our eyes and imagine these electric signals whizzing around our neural circuits and the amygdala quieting down, dampening in its inactivity, whilst the anterior cingulate cortex sparks up so that you can start looking to the forwards to the future and problem solving your way out of whatever threat is there for the here and now. There's also some other lovely ways that we can help to reduce stress. Um, so anything like, for example, exercise, and in particular, exercising with other people um, can help to synchronize brain waves so that people can start to see the world and think in the same way and share a perspective. So that can help to combat stress. There's other synchronized activities that can help with our brains and, and enhancing resilience. So for example, for those that aren't really that keen on exercise, just singing in a choir with other people can really help their brains to flourish. So I've been spending my time largely writing my next book, which is on collective intelligence. Um, so how brains can work together more effectively. And the provisional title of the book is Joined Up Thinking. It's being published with Hodder and is due for release in June 2022. So I'm looking forward to promoting my book uh, at its launch next summer. And we've got, fingers crossed, a BBC documentary series which will accompany the book release. Um, I'm really looking forward to discussing with different audiences how some of the research from this cutting edge field of neuroscience, how brains can work together more effectively, how that can be applied to some of the existential crises that are really facing humanity at the moment.